Hey guys, I'm here in Southern California with the all new Camry Hybrid LE. This is the base model actually, it has the smallest wheels. These are just 16 inch wheels here. And I'm gonna tell you all about this. Like, honestly, I think it's a game breaking sedan. It comes in around 28.5, I'll put the official MSRP. But after destination, it's about $30,000. This one has a few options on it. So it's up to about $32,000. But still at this price, you're getting Lexus ES levels of refinement, efficiency, power, design, technology. I can't say enough about this lowly base LE model, so let's get into it. <laughs> This is the new ocean gem color here on the Camry. I don't think it's on any other Toyota. And the hammerhead design here, you can really see it rain through with that line that comes right here. It's kind of like the body of the shark and then the hammerhead eye that slots right around it. It's absolutely stunning. We see this sort of design in the Crown, the Prius a little bit, and here in the Camry, it definitely looks like a part of the Toyota family, the modern Toyota family, but it's definitely unique to its own right and it's beautiful. Now, the base Ellie here has a unique grill. This is kind of all matte right here. On the XLE, they give it some extra paint garnish here, but I don't think it looks bad in this matte form. You're gonna have active shutters in there as well. Now, as we move up to the lights, this is actually your daytime running light. The headlight is on here. And this will double as amber for your parking lights as well as your turn indicators. Uh, but in, unlike some of the other grades that have kind of like the LED strip that kind of goes around here, we don't necessarily have that here on the base LED. I still think these headlights look fantastic. And on the high end grades, you have a double headlight here, like a dual LED light, which is typically seen in higher end Toyotas or even Lexus models. But here on this base model, it's just a single by LED headlight. Even on this base model, we have turn indicators on the side of the mirror. That's something you typically see on higher grade models. And this has uh, some vortex simulators here, which look pretty cool to help with wind buffeting. We'll talk about that noise. There's your turn indicator. So it's this amber portion on the inside. It is an incandescent bulb. This is not an LED turn indicator like you'll see on the higher end trims. The turn indicator on the back as well is an incandescent bulb, not full LED turn signal, but these rear tail lights are LEDs. These are the smallest wheels you can get here on the Toyota Camry for 2025. These are the 16 inch wheels. They are aluminum. They replace the base um, hubcaps and steel wheels of the previous generation. You can get uh, 18s on the XLE and 19s on the XSE. The SE, the base SE comes with 18 inch wheels as well. Beautiful roof line here. They've really lengthened it, but it still looks almost identical to the previous gen Camry, but this portion of the window is a little bit longer to give it that illusion of a longer, uh, more sleek roof line. Now, these 16 inch wheels as well on this LE allow th allows this grade to get up to 51 miles per gallon, but this has an optional all wheel drive. Yes, you heard it right. The Camry Hybrid can have all wheel drive and the Camry is fully hybrid now, obviously. But this gives it an extra seven horsepower. So we have 232 horsepower over the base 225. Um, and all wheel drive only sinks that fuel economy just one MPG. So I'm still getting, well, in theory, 50 miles per gallon here, but I'm a miser when it comes to driving hybrids and I know I'd be able to get quite a bit above that, especially in flat Florida where I live. I like the Camry lettering across the rear here. Uh, everyone knows the Camry name, so I'm glad Toyota's sticking with that beautiful Toyota badge here on the back. Um, no, no shame in the LE grade, guys. I think this is an absolute steal here if I can figure out how to open up. There it is, look at that. And it pops up open for me nicely. I can pull down the rear seats, fold them flat. Huge trunk in here. Um, it's gonna be probably identical in cargo space to the outgoing Camry. And we have a spare tire. Heck, so many luxury cars nowadays don't even have a spare tire. Well done, Toyota. And in some models, I'm thinking of like, I think it might be the Corolla Cross, I could be wrong on this. But sometimes when you get all wheel drive, you give up the spare tire. No, not on the Camry. On this ba base grade, you get a spare tire, bravo. That is one of the big surprises for me here. Real, real light trunk lid. That was just a, a weak throwdown by, by me. All right, how about we get on the back seat here? And this is something I think is also new to this generation. This line goes a little bit further back, cuts through uh, the gas cap, which you're not gonna be seeing a whole lot of. You're gonna be hardly ever filling up. Now this base LE, look at this two-tone. 
Yes, it's plastic back here, and the engine just fired up because it's running the AC here, um, but it's been idling a long time with the engine off, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's the beautiful thing about a hybrid. The engine will turn off and on as the car needs it. But I like this, a little silver bar accent. Even though it's plastic here, it is, um, you know, they break it up with a two-tone. I love this gray cloth. Look, it comes all the way out to the edge, right? In some vehicles, it's kind of, it can get plasticky around here. This is like a big old couch you're sitting in. Look at the design even here. This attention to detail, these waves. Love it. Very comfortable cloth seats in the back. So many cars in the base grade will also cheap out and not give you a fold down armrest. Not Toyota here. We have mat pockets on each side. Vents, guys, vents on the base grade for the rear seats. Uh, USBs in the back, standard USB-A and USB-C. What is the headroom like? Well, this doesn't have a panel roof. That might change a little bit uh, on the higher grades, but this has great head headroom here. I have two map lights on top, and this is set up for me at six foot one. Copious amounts of leg room. Super, super impressed. Let's go ahead and get on the interior on the front seat. And that's where most of you guys are gonna be spending your time. And how do these doors sound real quick? Huh? Pretty good. I get a little bit of like an echoey vibration from the gas cap when you close the back door, but that's real nitpicky. How does this door sound? Actually really good. Very, very good. All right, check this out. Cloth, look at this soft element that goes all the way, super soft to touch. Again, that uh, accent bar that comes across here. Adjustment for the mirrors, of course, safety system plus 3.0. So it has blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, all that good stuff. Again, real nice bolstering here, big fat seat, bottom of the cushion here. That's something the Crown Signia I was driving. Well, I can, actually I can't say driving impression. So I'm just gonna say that the, this seat is nice, long and accommodating for us bigger American people. Um, this has the optional sunroof here and it's pretty big to be honest. I thought it would be a bit smaller. It takes up a lot of uh, that canopy room. All right, look, attention to detail here on the dash. The vents even have some crisscross pattern to them. We have like these parallel lines that run the, the width of the vehicle. So getting in, it's getting kind of hot. It's only 64 degrees, but the, the desert sun here just north of Mexico is starting to, to warm me up. But uh, yeah, look at that cloth pattern that comes all the way across. And those parallel lines that start over here, they keep going. Now this is a base screen. I'm perfectly happy with this base eight inch screen. Look at this, right off the steering wheel onto the volume knob. Yes, I could play with the volume over here, but it's just one click at a time and it's not actually the, the best way to interact with the volume. If you want fast, boom, right there. I have wireless Apple CarPlay go, well, it's Android Auto, wireless Android Auto's option here as well, or should I say standard. Now I have the optional heated seat package. It's a cold weather package, which actually gives me a heated steering wheel. Check that out, and it's look at this, it's auto. So if the, the steering wheel senses that it's cold, it will automatically heat it up. I don't have to press the button. How amazing is that? But it still has two different settings of heated steering wheel. You have three different settings of heated seats. If you want ventilated seats, you're gonna have to go to XSE or uh, XLE. Um, just look at this, so simple, so uh, easy to get to as well. Turn down the volume, maybe I turn on the heated seat. Like it's all right here, defrost, AC, Perfect, well done Toyota, I'm very, very impressed. Two small vents, maybe this could be an issue potentially, but Toyota hybrids and its AC are typic it's typically really icy on the inside. Now, the sun is coming up and I am starting to see some reflections here, not on the piano black yet. I'm gonna have to test this in the Florida sun to see how intrusive some of this uh, reflections could be on this glossy black. I don't mind it because it has a lot of depth to it. If it was just a sheet of glossy piano black, I would be sick to my stomach. But at least Toyota, uh, there's my friend David Chow texting me, probably about Forerunner stuff because of Forerunner's the reveal, uh, at, the reveals at the day of this recording. So anyways, yes, it looks very, very posh on here, even though it's a base grade. Honestly, this is fantastic. USB-A for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you want to do it wired. You have two USB-Cs, cargo space here, wireless Qi standard, 
heck yeah, traditional shifter, throw it into drive, throw it into park. This is all very similar to the outgoing uh, Camry. Eco, normal, sport driving modes, auto brake, hold, here's your electronic parking brake. I like how they opened all this up so I can just throw my phone around here. Um, and it is rubber mat at the bottom, so things aren't gonna be flying around that much or be too loud. Inside here we felt lined, another 12 volt accessory. Uh, very, very nice, and that's a lot of space in there as well. Uh, so with that being said, I think I've covered just about everything. Oh, the sunroof does open if you were wondering, but we're gonna close it back up. Steering wheel quality, leather wrapped. Leather wrapped on base grade. Look at this fantastic stitching, beautiful steering wheel, very easy to figure out. And check this out. The base screen is a seven inch screen. I know it's flickering a bit. There, I brightened it all the way up and now it looks a little bit better for you guys. And the brighten button is just right here. It's just one button cycle, it goes down and brightness, it goes back up for brightness. Anyways, I love this seven inch screen. I had the 12 inch screen also, and the 12 inch screen is really hard to customize while you're driving, it's confusing. Yes, it's beautiful, but I like simplicity and like direct input a lot better. All I have to do to adjust that screen is play with this. It's just simple up and down, all right? So here's my safety settings, really easy to fly through and turn on and off certain safety settings. Um, I can look at my battery uh, charge. I can look at all, all my information here just with the D-pad and I don't have to run through this screen too much. And Toyota's done a really nice job here not making it look like a screen because these elements on the side are digital as well. There's a lot of benefits to having this small screen. So let's go ahead and start driving the new fantastic Toyota Camry LE. Put it into drive. I heard the engine actually fired up there because the battery's getting low, so it's just been idling, running that AC. Now, when I was just going around 60, uh, sorry, 25 miles an hour through this winding neighborhood road, guys, I was seeing like over 60 miles per gallon. Uh, now, of course, your mileage will vary depending on your needs and how fast you're going and the elevation, all that stuff. So I'm gonna talk about um, the ride quality as well as my driving impressions of sportiness. Let's get into the brakes right away. Toyota has nailed the brakes on the new Camry. It doesn't matter. It's the same brake feel across all grades. Um, it's not like the XSE gets bigger brakes or anything. Fantastic brake response here. There's less travel, but it's a lot more predictable and more confidence inspiring than before. So the brakes in here, they don't feel like a hybrid. They like almost feel like a sports car. All right, speaking of sports car, even though I'm in the LE, the handling in here and the, the ride doesn't feel like it's super eager to turn in. You just, it, it's not like the steering wheel is like loose either. It has a, a decent amount of resistance. I wish it was a little bit more, but it wants to turn in really, really fast like a little sports car. And it handles so well. The suspension, even on the base LE, you know, the SE and the XSE have sport tuned suspension. And in fact, I feel like those not only handle just a hair bit better, um, possibly, right? I'm not pushing them too hard, but they still have really good ride quality. What's the ride quality like here on this base LE? Well, I would say it's, it's like Lexus ES, to be honest. Maybe I have a little bit more vibration through my seat compared to a Lexus, but I'm getting a lot less vibration through the steering wheel compared to the $50,000 uh, Crown Signia that I was yesterday. So Toyota's done some magic here. This product, it feels like an old glove, but with this new fifth gen Toyota hybrid system, we're just like, you know, I, I'm not gonna do double lines here because it is what it is. So maybe I'll just like flip a U-turn <laughs> when I can, but now there's someone behind me. So it, it is what it is. It says rock slide area, but um, how quiet is this vehicle? The wind noise and the wind buffeting is very minimal. Now I haven't taken it at like 70, 80 miles an hour, I've done 60 in it and it's really, really quiet. And once we get around this turn, all I can think about is passing this rock mine and truck. Like he has sacks of rocks on the bed. Here we go. That, that 232 horsepower, super zippy and I was going uphill. And it was, you know, the engine feels quieter in here than it was in the Crown Signia. So I drove the Crown Signia a lot yesterday and I liked it. I'm like, you know, it's getting close to Lexus quality, but it's not quite there yet. This car, it feels like 
a modern Lexus ES, except a little bit more, it's, it's lighter, so it's a little bit more fun to drive. And the sound insulation, no, I don't have like acoustic glass here. But the Crown Signia had acoustic glass and I feel like that car was potentially even louder. Like, <laughs> guys, this is a $32,000 the way it's equipped. You can get them for less, right? Around $30,000 if you don't want the sunroof or the heated seats, heated steering wheel, or the, key, like, the smart key access. And that also gives me um, the, the power seat for the driver, the, the base seat here, guys. I'm gonna, oh, that's Border Patrol, so maybe I don't wanna do a U-turn in front of him but the base seat is uh manual which i could live with that because i just love the, these cloth seats they're gonna breathe really really well uh for you too so they're great for hot climates they're great for cold climates because the leather doesn't or the synthetic leather doesn't get too cold so maybe i'll turn here getting into the brakes again oh great feel great resistance and back into the gas because i don't know if anyone's coming around coming around and coming around the mountain when they come so uh yeah now now that i'm going back downhill i can get to kind of coast and ev mode and with this fifth gen hybrid system uh toyota has reduced the size of the motors okay so not only well i said toyota and triggered the, this okay now I, i've really made it mad <laughs> it's just it feels so good the the camera feels smaller than what it is <laughs> fantastic guys i have 16 inch alloy wheels in here and the grip is still fantastic it holds its own so don't think like the x the xse and the se yeah maybe they can handle a little bit better but honestly for my needs like this still outperforms like even probably what i'm capable of comfortably pushing a camry on the street so like well done toyota and I knew the Camry was going to be, like, I knew I was going to like it, but I'm like, you know, it's still going to feel cheap on the inside, you know, it's it's still not going to come close to a Lexus ES. I, now it's like, it's hard for me to recommend a Lexus ES because this, even this base grade Camry at $30,000 is, I just missed the Toyota turnoff, is just an absolute home run you can option this out to be about 10 grand more low 40s for like the fully loaded xle or the fully loaded xse but what's the point like do you really need to have ventilated seats do you need to have the big screen this still gives me beautiful android auto it's very crisp it doesn't look out of place here yes this bezel is kind of large over here but that doesn't bother me it doesn't look ugly like it does in the prius the prius with the base screen looks really ugly this looks fine it's kind of integrated into the design of the car this smaller seven inch screen here is more functional than the larger, more flashy 12 inch screen. And I have great comfort, great efficiency. Um, since I reset it going down the mountain, it says 90 miles a gallon, of course, as it's going straight downhill. But yeah, this, this will do zero to 60. Actually, I haven't tested it, but there's nowhere flat to do it here, but it'll probably do zero to 60 in around seven seconds. The, the car's passing me, very acceptable volume. But when there's no cars around you, even going up this mountain, my foot's about maybe 50% down. I don't hear the engine at all. Um, and there, there's, dang it, I can't say too much about the Crown Signia because I'm under, under embargo, so I gotta be careful. But uh, it is it is absolutely fantastic. I'll say that. You're getting Lexus levels of uh, powertrain smoothest refinement pretty quiet as well no i don't have semi-line leather in here but these cloth seats toyota's make them look very classy the cloth adornments on the dash and on the doors here and the technology is up to date so i'm done gushing about this base grade i love to see bread bang for your buck and the bang for your buck you're getting here on the base le which comes in now at like 500 dollars less than the outgoing base le what more could you ask for in a everyday sedan i'm gonna end it there thank you toyota for bringing me out to drive this uh new fifth gen hybrid system this is the first time fifth gen has been implemented into a to toyota with the two and a half liter system that we have here uh so i i it's absolutely amazing how torquey and responsive it is and how refined it is here in this Camry. 
long live the Camry and long live this, the Toyota sedan. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.